today we're going to see if we can turn this and this into this. What is this, you might ask? Well, it's a very handy dandy iPad, iPod, iPhone, earbud, earbud stand. Something useful to use around your home. I'll show you how it's done. All right, so as usual, the most important thing to do when you're starting is just to make sure that your work environment is safe and ready. And we're just gonna do some basic marking out and measuring. So uh, we're gonna guesstimate about 300 mils to start. And I'm gonna take a tape measure, measure 300 mils here, measure 300 mils here. We're gonna cut ourselves some pieces to work with. Remember, of course, that cutting sheet goods is really, really simple stuff. And there's lots of ways to do it. Check out our other video on how to cut uh, sheet goods. Remember always when you're cutting anything, safety glasses and hearing protection. Okay, so we've cut our two pieces of plywood that we're gonna to use to start working with. Um, we're gonna cut those to square shape now. Okay, so we are ready to cut the top section of our iPad stand. We want our angle to be about 10 degrees. So I'm gonna set my blade to 10 degrees, which it now is. So I'm gonna go in 200 mils or 20 centimeters from one end and the same from the other end. And these are approximate measurements just to give us some sort of idea. Okay, so let's just do a test fit. You want to be very careful at this stage just to make sure that things fit together. One way to do it is to fit everything back together once you've cut it and then do what they call a carpenter's triangle. So just do a triangle on here like that. Now I can't lose my way. I can't make a mistake in terms of where things go. So all I've got to do is separate this by the distance of the spacer. So all I have to do is make this cut here. Right, okay, reassemble the triangle. Now you know you can't get it wrong. Before we glue this together, what we want to do is we're gonna cut a hole in the middle of this over here for a recess, which we will cut out here. We'll cut the recess out here so that later on when we put this together, you'll see what its purpose is. Now off to the drill press to cut this hole. All right, so we're just gonna use a hole saw to cut out the hole in the top layer. Okay, with our circle. So now we've cut our hole, we're gonna use our spacer and we're gonna use some clever glue tricks to glue this guy together. If you don't have a nail gun or some sort of a uh, device to clamp things down, then uh, there's a little good trick I'll show you which uh, definitely saves a lot of time. So we're gonna use some CA glue and some activator to speed up the process so that we can carry on moving uh, and working. So I'm gonna flip this upside down. I'm gonna put some CA glue in the corners here just a little wee bit. We're gonna put some normal wood glue on as well, some Gorilla Glue. And while this glue is drying, the CA glue will hold everything in position. So, like that. It's always a nerve wracking moment. You think like, have I got this right? I'm not doing it, have I done this the right way? But we're gonna have faith in our carpenter's triangle. Now I'm going to do the same with the other three pieces to get things in position. Right, so spacer in, right, spacer out. That all looks very good. Because we've done the super glue trick, we can move on to the next stage without having to wait. Right, so here's what we have, if you look at it like this. Now we've got our, we've got our design, we've got our grooves where they should be, we've got our circle where we want it. All we have to do now is cut this into a circle. And then we're gonna get our perfect looking thing. To get a circle, we're going to flip this upside down and I'm going to use my speed square. So we're going to do that and I'm going to go on this corner, 
trace that. And that there is my center. What I'm gonna do now is drill a tiny hole just there so that I can fit this onto my jig and use it to cut my circle. Okay, now, if we want a 300 round, if this is 300 mils, I want to cut this as big as possible. So I'm gonna cut this at 300 mils, which means half of that is 15 centimeters or 150 mils. I'm gonna set my jig to 150 mils and we're gonna cut this circle. Now, how do you cut a circle uh, with some, you know, with plywood? How do you cut a circle? Well, there are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, you can use a jigsaw, which is a simple tool to use. Um, it's not as accurate as a jig, but a jigsaw will give you a close enough circle that if you do a little bit of sanding, you can get things just perfect. Um, me, I like using jigs, and I've made a jig for my uh, bandsaw that's actually also just made out of plywood. So this is a cool jig, very simple one. I've got a pin that slides back and forth a certain distance from the center of where the blade is, and I'll show you guys how that works right now. We put onto the bandsaw, we'll cut our circle. Once we've got our circle cut, we're almost home. Just gonna round over some edges, sand it, make it look lovely, and boom, we've got a thing. Come check this out. This is always the trickiest part with this. Get in there, get in there, get in there. So there we go. So now we've got our stand all set, cut into a nice, nice uh, circle. All we have to do now is spend a little bit of time cleaning up the edges, making it nice bit of sanding. But before we do any of that, we're also going to round over this edge here. And we're going to use a router to do that. So I'll show you guys how to just take a router and clean up these outside edges to make it feel nice and soft. Then there's a little bit of sanding to do, apply some finish, and we'll have a cool thing. All right, so now we're at the part where we're going to put um, a profile around the edge of this so that it's just a bit more interesting. Um, we're going to use a handheld router. This is a trim router. Uh, I love these little routers because they're easy to use. Um, they are one-handed uh, tool. They're not difficult to control. And we've got ourselves a chamfer bit in here. So it's a 45 degree chamfer. So what we're going to achieve is a nice 45 degree chamfer all the way there on the outside of this thing. Now we're gonna run up against this bearing here so that we can't go too far. However, we've got to be careful when we get to these gaps here because there's nothing for the bearing to run up against. So we have to just go do that part very, very slowly. I've got my piece on a non-slip pad just to help me to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I've got my eye protection on, my ear protection on. We're going to router in an anti-clockwise motion. In other words, we are going to go in that direction. Right, so first things first, safety gear and let's go. So now we've got our chamfer the whole way around. Um, we're going to require a bit of sanding and a bit of cleaning up, which is what we're going to do next. Tablet works well. Phone. Oh, I like a glove. Okay, so the final bit of work we've got to do is make little recesses for our AirPods. And I'm using an awl to help me get my hole position absolutely perfect. And this is a cool little piece of equipment because it helps you make sure that your drill doesn't skip around when you want to drill it. So I'm gonna drill straight down, but I wanna make sure that I don't go too deep. So I'm gonna quickly go and grab some tape and put it around this drill bit to make sure that I don't go deeper than what I want to go. Okay, now I've got something to show me where to stop drilling and I'm gonna drill straight down. Oh 
one more time for this one. Right, let's see if things fit. Let's see if those look good. Like that. Okay, we're finally at that stage where it's all coming together and we want to just put some finish on. Look what happens when I put this on. It'll make the colors of this plywood just pop. Okay, so that's one coat down. We're gonna wait for this coat to dry. We're gonna give it a few minutes. Then we're gonna denib with some very fine sandpaper. Denibbing basically means to give it a light sand. And then we're gonna put on another layer. Ideally, you wanna put two or maybe even three coats on just to protect it. So we're gonna give this some time to dry. We're gonna come back in a few minutes, give it a light sand, one more coat, and we're going to be D-O-N-E done. Okay, so this is ready for the last coat. So all we're doing again, It's a light coat. All right guys, so there it is. Nice simple project that absolutely anyone can do. It looks complicated, but it's not. If you just uh, go step, step by step, go slowly, think about it um, and have fun along the way. Uh, there's all kinds of cool tips and tricks that I hope you picked up. Um, there's lots more tips and tricks to follow, lots more projects to follow. So keep following the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and um, come back soon. Cheers. Oh. Uh -oh.